classroom that we all have. Um, one thing that I've already always um, wondered is how to reach high-end kids in the regular mathematics classroom because they are the ones that come to us knowing what they're doing already and we just need to be able to, to move them wider and not deeper and not wider. They need to, they need to um, internalize that knowledge and be able to present it to others in, in order to really understand and to be able to move on easily to the next level of the curriculum. So the one thing that I put into question form was how does the use of presentation applications impact the motivation of high performing students in the regular classroom? So we're going to look specifically at this word motivation. Um, motivation is difficult for some high-end kids and conversations that I've had with Ms. Jared, who is our gifted education specialist, um, you know, we, we have had that conversation before and very often if kids already know too much when they get to us, they lack motivation and that's something that we struggle with. Uh, these are sub, I just called them sub-wonderings because they were also little things that I wondered about the original question. What presentation apps could I use that were kid-friendly enough for them to uh, complete just a coherent presentation, one that wasn't uh, just nonsense? How can student motivation be measured? And that's very difficult because they can act so motivated, but once they get into a project, you see that they're not quite as motivated as you thought they were. And then will students be more motivated to internal Lies knowledge if they understand that they've got to teach their peers. So I've touched a little bit on peer tutoring with this uh, inquiry. I want to do more with that because I, that that became almost the next wondering because I was uh, I, I really was interested in, in the way that the high end kids could help the the lower kids. Um, and then how did you arrive? How did I arrive at this inquiry? administrative prompting. Ms. Hayes in one da uh, faculty meeting kind of mentioned, you know, we've gotten really, really good at meeting uh, children who struggle and we've got help through the special ed department with kids who struggle. Um, we have the help with the gifted kids, but we can't let them just languish in a regular classroom. We can't let the gifted program meet all of their needs and so that's that has always been in the back of my mind and then when she said it in the faculty meeting it kind of kind of set off a little bell. Uh, the Spring Benchmark Global Test Scho Global Scholar Test Scores told me exactly what I was was doing in the classroom. I was meeting the needs of low kids and, and middle kids and the high kids were kind of stagnant and so I decided that I had to do something in order to meet their needs as well. And then, of course, conversations with Kim about uh, how we could do this. Uh, the literature is very limited on specifically presentation applications with gifted kids. In the folder, the paper clipped um, articles are the articles that I read before I did the, the uh, presentation. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this Global Kids Network pilot. Uh, study, excellent resource there. This Nevin, and I guess that's Yarkovic, I'm thinking that it's probably, oh, Jay pronounces a Y, I'm not sure. Uh, he is the author and the uh, owner of a math website that is specifically geared to high-end learners, and he said the one student population whose needs have been ignored throughout the No Child Left Behind testing era of the past decade is undeniably gifted students. And that is such a shame because those are the ones that are going to be taking care of us when we're old. Um, and then this Renzulli team is the one that did the pilot study through the Gifted Kids Network. And they emphasize technology in group projects, group cooperation projects. And they preach it and they talk about it and they try to get regular ed teachers to do it. And, you know, it's just, it's very, it's hard to manage, and I think that's why um, regular ed classroom teachers have difficulty with group projects. Students who use tech and group learning, this is what the Renzulli team um, decided. They demonstrate greater collaboration skills, which is one thing that Common Core has told us 
that, that our students need. Uh, they increase reading and writing skills, Christy. Um, so those group projects, even in the mathematics classroom, are helping you out. And they attained or surpassed benchmark scores in everything they did. Um, so it's not that if we let them go do independent projects, their learning is going to suffer. You know, I very specifically cut chess the geometry unit because I know that it's a unit that kids don't tend to struggle with as much. And so we use geometry uh, because I, I was I had that that little oh I'm afraid to let them go moment. And so we use the geometry because that I, I feared that less with that unit. Okay, the design of this study, what I did during the study. You'll see in the um, folder also, I gave you a copy of just the parent permission slip that I sent home. And what I ended up finding out it, through this parent permission, permission slip was that how excited were the parents about something like this. Um, if I got it back immediately, I knew that the, the parents were on board with me. I had two or three that, you know, oh, I, I'd know and bring it back and you know, I've never heard from. So they weren't able to participate in the study. I took them out of the study. Um, then I had some that got it back the next day. I knew their parents were happy with it. They were so excited, which is another measure of motivation, how quickly they got this information back to me. Um, and then the student interest inventory is the staple. And this is just a little sheet that I used to try to figure out how the kids felt about math, and I told you I pulled these kids because I knew that they felt pretty good about math anyway. They weren't going to um, be afraid that they were going to miss something. So I, the kids that I pulled, I knew that they were going to, you know, think. I didn't know they were going to think quite as highly of themselves and their ability, but they did. They they all felt like they were really really good at math, and that this study was just for them. This this independent learning projects is what we started calling them. Um, okay, then I started uh, making a journal, and I'll show you an excerpt from that journal in just a moment. Um, but one thing we did is put put our um, presentations. This is just my page on the Barclay Bridge site, and I started just dumping presentations um, onto the. Website. This is one that my kid, my homeroom did, and it's short, but it talks about what angles are. It gives them a chance to redefine what angles are. It gave them a chance to come up and um, talk about lines and rays with the rest of the class, and this just gave them a basis from which to work. Um, and that's another thing I want to talk to, to y'all about. That's just one. You saw I saw I had the. Um, I saw I had a bunch of different ones on there. Had one from Zook's home room. This one was from um, uh, Miss Meadows' home room. And then I put those on there, the PowerPoints on there, because the my class website, which is this one, the Weebly website, does not let you download PowerPoints unless you pay for it. I don't want to pay for it. So. Alright, so here's one, here's a Prezi. And the Prezi was not a, um, a tool that they were used to. They were used to using when they started this. So I felt good about having given them another sort of presentation tool. Okay. Okay, and these were all Prezi. So Leah Wright got so excited about using Prezi that she went home and created her own account. Um, but some of the kids just used my account and came up with some, some fairly complicated Prezi's. Prezi's 
not the easy, the most user friendly type of presentation application. Uh, they were trying to fit some lines there. Symmetry that one of the classes did. Um, they like the newspaper style. This was uh, Kelly's class as well. And that's another thing I found. Um, the classes that I have later in the day um, tended to perform better in, in this. And it's because I think that um, I've gotten better at saying what I'm going to say. And they, and we call this Evans rule because he's, he just spontaneously figured this out without uh, talking about lines of symmetry and how you can count the number of lines of symmetry by counting sides and angles. And, um, and then, you know, they got creative at pulling pictures off the web to dump into their crazies. So I published all these so that parents could see what was going on in the classroom. I mean, I was looking um, put a, I put a video on YouTube of Mary Claire Chrissy. I think I showed you that one. Uh, and she was uh, talking about line symmetry and what it was. And, and But you have to be careful to get those parent permissions list, especially before you put them on YouTube. Um, this is the journal, I kept a journal during the whole project, and this is sort of just an annotated uh, page from my journal. And I broke my, my data analysis down into the, the red was the attitude of students. Where did I see that the attitude of students was being demonstrated? Um, were they happy that day? Were they sad they didn't get to the, the presentation application? Uh, green was teacher involvement. Uh, blue was time issues, and orange was just computer glitches or glitches and trying to download information. Um, these are the things I looked at. I did look at the test grades because I wanted to make sure that these students did not regress any. And you know, what I did was let them do the two key point questions and go math. And if they got those, I sent them sent them on to work while I worked with the rest of the class. <laughs> um, what, this is what I learned. Student attitude, they loved it. It was almost excessive. They, they, they you know, got on my nerves. We're going to be able to do the project today. Or we, can we work on the project? Well, you know, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Look, hang on. And so it was just unbelievably excited about it. They were especially excited to present their projects to the other class, which is why I want to look more about peer, uh, peer tutoring. And they uh, enjoyed the projects being on the website so their parents could see. The applications, there are very few applications that are truly independent for fourth grade kids. Um, Crazy and PowerPoint and YouTube, those are go-tos. You can get what you, you know, you can get some projects up there. I tried a voice thread with one group and it was a no-go. Um, they, they just kept coming back. Independence is a real issue with this uh, because I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to teach kids who, who need me to hold their hand, and I've got these high-end kids that, you know, are in my ear wanting me to do something for them. Uh, my involvement. Gifted learners still require my involvement. You can't just let them go. Independence is not truly independence. Um, the expect my expectations need to be controlled uh, because I was expecting these, you know, 12-frame slideshows, um, wonderful YouTube videos with, you know, uh, Academy Award winning performances, and it, that's just not going to happen. Uh, so I need to, to change the way I look, and anything that they can get on an application is a step in the right direction. Um, I need to be patient and realistic with them. They're 9 and 10 years old, and I'm not going to get something that I would get from an adult or even an older student. Uh, my words directly affect how they felt about that presentation. If I went over there and said, oh, hmm, all right, then they were less enthusiastic than if I went over there and said, that's really good. Why don't you try something else? So I